My name is Niels, I'm a teacher at the FabLab Arnhem, which is a digital fabrication makerspace within the Han University of Applied Sciences. Being part of the Han University of Applied Sciences allows us to work closely together with education and research, which means that we, for example, teach students from industrial design and mechanical engineering how to design for and how to work with these digital fabrication technologies. As since the Han University is a university of applied sciences, that means that most projects that we help create are very practical and tangible by nature. As a FabLab, we offer various digital fabrication technologies like additive manufacturing, such as FDM printing, resin printing, and SLS printing, with various materials ranging from standard PLA to ceramics and high-grade engineering plastics. And to complement our other fabrication technologies, we also provide access to 3D scanning equipment, such as the OptimScan 5M and the portable Einscan HX. We choose shiny 3D equipment because as a FabLab we have a very diversified user base ranging from students to researchers and artists and they all have very different needs. Using the equipment from Shining 3D allows us to fulfill all these needs. Because for example, we can use the OptimScan 5M for very detailed small objects and profit from the portability of the Einscan HX to scan large objects at location. This approach makes it very accessible for users because they only need to understand one software package. The best way to help other people create things is to create our own things as well. And we do this by sometimes taking on external assignments, like one assignment by Museum Lalique. The Museum Lalique focuses on glass art by famous artist René Lalique from the late 19th century. And they asked us to recreate a fountain that was made for the Paris World Exhibition in 1925. This was a 40 meter high fountain featuring 128 statues from Greek mythology. However, these statues are now sought after rare objects that are hard to get. So we were asked to help them recreate this fountain at scale. Our main challenge was to acquire the 3D data of a small glass object, and we couldn't use any scanning spray. We therefore decided to create a silicone mold of the original glass object so that we could cast a small white statue that was much easier to scan. We produced the mold at the museum so that we didn't have to bring the artifact back to the fab lab. The cast apart is an almost perfect replica of the original that we could then use to acquire the 3D data. We chose the OptimScan 5M so that we could capture as much detail as possible so that the reconstruction came closer to how the artist originally envisioned his creation. This scanner was the best choice because our casting was only 11 centimeters in height, so all the details were very small. After taking the scan, we used Blender modeling software to refine the model, so we could take out air bubbles and other small artifacts that were visible in the original statue. Using the sculpting tools from Blender allowed us to refine the statue so that when we scaled it up, it would still look as good as the original. Our next step was to transfer the 3D data into a 3D model. And for this, we used resin technology. So we used SLA printers to cure a clear resin layer by layer to capture as much detail as possible. Because the original fountain had different size objects, we also created different size prints, ranging from small prints from 20 centimeters to very large resin prints of 38 centimeters, which consumed over one liter of resin and took over 30 hours to print. After cleaning and curing, we post-processed the print by polishing it up so that it became all shiny again, like the original glass sculpture. We used these 3D prints to create master molds from silicone so that we could create a production batch from polyurethane. We use this because the fountain is going to be placed outside and the polyurethane is non-yellowing and UV resistant. The beauty of the scan, design and print workflow is that we can manipulate the data after scanning, make a test print, iterate over this and make sure that our final version is perfect without having to invest in very expensive traditional tooling. We 
can now use these 3D technologies to create highly accurate 3D data of objects so that we can better preserve them. Take for example Art and Heritage, where we can use the 3D data to share this data for research purposes, or to integrate it in VR experiences, or even to create replicas that people can touch. To really understand all the possibilities of these technologies, it's essential to integrate it into education so that people get acquainted with it and are more likely to use it in the future.